Good morning. Good morning. That was a great set. Anyway, so we are going to be back into Daniel, chapter 11, uh, verses 36 through 45. Uh, it's been a minute since we've been back in Daniel. Um, had a little Easter uh, sermons going on. I think the batteries are dead. So, you just have to... I'll be okay. I think you all can hear me all right, can't you? Yep, sir. All right. And, uh... So, so we're like I said, we're back in Daniel. We had a little Easter uh, pre Easter sermon um, series going on about the road to the resurrection and the Easter, and then uh, a couple baptisms in there, you know, and a few other things. That, so we're back in Daniel, and we'll be on chapter uh, here, chapter eleven. Um, it's on page seven thirty one in your pew Bibles. If you didn't bring your Bible, um, but I just want to kind of recap a little bit about the first uh, thirty five verses there in, in Daniel. Daniel. It is is prophesizing about what's going to happen in the future, okay? And so we get to, and we get those first 35 verses, kind of a history lesson uh, of the king of the south and maybe the king of the north and the king of the north did this and the king of the south. And, and we can go back and we can, we can look at all the things that happened that Daniel prophesied and how they all came true, right down through the list. And then the second part of, of that was uh, of a guy named Antiochus Epiphanes, um, who was a, a type of the Antichrist and, and what he did. And, but we can see all that. Well, from here to the end of the book, Daniel talks about end of the times, the end of human history. So, so what was a history lesson before, now comes what's going to happen at the end, end of the times. And so uh, we, we look at this and we, and we think about it. Um, talking about the Antichrist today. You know, we will talk a little bit about the tribulation. We will be talk a little bit about the rapture. We will be talking, you know, as, as I get going a little bit more um, in, into this last few verses here, or, or chapters. But today we're talking about the Antichrist and, and uh, on how I think that we can recognize who he will be. And, and so we'll, we'll get into that as we go. So if you will, please stand as I read Daniel chapter 11. Starting in verse 36 through 45. It says, And the king will do as he pleases, and he will exalt and magnify himself above every god, and will speak monstrous things against the god of gods, and he will prosper until the end, end of the nation is finished. That which is decreed will be done. He will show no regard for the gods of his father, or for the desires of the women, nor will he show regard for any other god, for he will magnify himself above them all. But instead, he will honor a God of fortress, a God whom his fathers did not know. He will honor him with gold, silver, costly stones, and treasures. He will take actions against the strongest of fortresses, and with the help of a foreign God, he will give great honor to those who acknowledge him, and will cause them to rule over the many, and will parcel out land for a price. At the end time, the king of the south will collide with him, and the king of the north will storm against him with chariots, horsemen and with many ships and he will enter countries overflow them and pass through. He will also enter the beautiful land and many countries will fall but these will be rescued out of the hand out of his hand. Edom, Moab and the foremost the sons of Ammon. Then he will stretch out his hand against other countries and the land of Egypt will not escape. But he will gain control over the hidden treasures of gold and silver and over all the precious things of Egypt and Libyans and the Ethiopians will follow at his heels. The rumors from the east and from the north will disturb him. And he will go forth with great wrath to destroy and annihilate many. He will pitch the tents of his royal pavilion between the seas and the beautiful holy mountain. Yet he will come to his end and no one will help him. Let's pray. Lord Heavenly Father, I just, just thank you for the ability to come and worship you, Lord. And that we can come without any any persecution, that we can come without, without any any hindrance and to worship you. And Lord, I am so grateful that uh, we were able to come and sing songs of worship, Lord, that we were able to read scripture. And Lord, I pray now as we go into the time of this message, Lord, I pray that, that your words will be spoken, that you can give us a clear image of, of your son and, and of who he is and what he will do. Lord, I thank
thank you once again for giving us strength and ability to do this. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, there was a guy named Ignatius who, who lived in about 110 A.D., and he wrote this about the last days. He said, the last day are upon us. Wait carefully the times. Look for him who is above all time, eternal and invisible. Another guy named Martin, about 375 A.D., wrote, There is no doubt the Antichrist has already been born. Firmly established in this year, he will, after reaching maturity, achieve supreme power. There was a, a church father named Hippolytus who wrote in the year 236 A.D. that Christ was sure to return by 500 A.D. Martin Luther wrote, We have reached the time of the White House, of, of, of the White Horse of the Apocalypse. This war will not last any longer than a hundred years. And Christopher Columbus, I, I didn't know this, but he was a student of biblical prophecies. And, and, and he wrote that there is no doubt that the world must end in 155 years, in 1656, which he said the world would end. That's about the same time we all know that William Miller uh, proclaimed that the world was going to end in March of, of 1842, which it didn't end, and so he came back with March 10th, or March 20th, uh, October 20th of, of 1843, and said that... Uh, that it was going to end then. And they, there was even signs that was in the store that says, Get ready. This shop is closed in honor of the King of Kings who will appear. Get ready, friends, to crown him Lord of Lords. We all know that that didn't happen. You know, uh, we're living in a time between when Christ was here and when Christ is going to return. You know, people point out and say that the world's going to end. You know, even last week with the eclipse. You know, how many times did, did you hear that, that, that the comet that was coming through and this was going to happen, it was going to be the end of the world, right? I mean, you know, people are predicting this, but let me tell you, the world won't end until the Antichrist shows up. There are signs that will happen at the end of the world. It's just not going to happen overnight. I mean, there has got to be, the, the scripture tells us that there has to be an Antichrist. It's going to be a, a, a reign of, of, of seven years of the Antichrist. And it, it gives us very specific things about the end of the world. Daniel was just a, just a tip of the iceberg about what he writes about the Antichrist and, and, and the stuff in here. But, but let me tell you, uh, I believe that, we'll, that one day we, we'll see the Antichrist. We'll see the end of the world. I mean, the, the world that we live in is so immoral right now. Uh, man, every generation feels that way. I mean, I think that every generation has looked at the generation that's coming up and said, this is it. Look, look at this generation coming. You know, but, but it will happen. When we get to these verses here, because there's a definite break between 35 and 36, like I said. And we're, we're going to see that this, that Daniel's talking about the Antichrist. He, he is talking about a king. And this king is different than the king of the south and the king of the north. Uh, it, we see that this guy is different than um, Antiochus Epiphanes. Because uh, it didn't happen during his time. And what's going on, what Daniel is saying has not taken place yet. And this is the Antichrist that Daniel predicts in chapter 7 and in chapter 9. We're going to see, talk about the wars that's going to happen up to the very end of mankind. We're, we're going to see how it's going to be climaxed in the battle of Armageddon. Uh, we're going to see how the Antichrist will, will rise and seek to become the supreme ruler of the world. Let me tell you what, he's going to blind a lot of people. There's going to be a lot of people who, who, are, going to, who are going to want to follow this guy. Okay? We have to be ready. We have to know our scriptures. We have to understand when, when he shows up uh, that, that he is the Antichrist. And I believe the only way we can do that is, is, is be in our scriptures. Know who he is. Let me tell you what, man. This guy's going to come. He's going to offer fix the problems like famine and earthquakes and disease. There's going to be a lot of people that's going to follow him. So I want to look at the scriptures and we're going to talk about this um, a little bit and then 
then I'm going to have four points that I think that we truly can identify. I'm just kind of back up what the scripture is saying. Now, verses 36 through 39 is really, we're going to see uh, the Antichrist will be characterized by nine different traits. And so I'm just going to kind of, as I, as I go along, I'm just kind of read the scripture um, as, I, as I do. Um, first part says, the king will do as he pleases. So we're going to see that the Antichrist will do whatever he desires. It will be, he's going to be focused on his own personal ambition, what he can gain, what, what he can elevate himself to. Um, he won't consider anybody else. He, he's going to have public support and, and political power. Um, and he's going to be convinced that he alone, that he alone can, can uh, solve the, the world's problems. Um, we're going to see that, that that's what this guy is going to do. We're going to see that the Antichrist is even going to exalt himself above other gods. We see the second part of 36 is and he will exalt and magnify himself above every god and, and, and will speak monstrous things against God. So, so we see that he's going, to, he's going to elevate himself, that he's going to think that he, he's a, above God, even, 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 even our Lord. Not only will that, will he do that, but he's going to blaspheme God's name. He's going to exalt himself over God, and he's going to blaspheme God and, and use his name. And, and, and I, I, I don't think that it's just going to be a little, I think it's going to be so, it's, it's going to be shocking um, on how, how bad he's going to blaspheme God. You know, uh, in, in, in the last part of 36, it says that, that he will prosper until the end of the nation is finished, for which his decree will be done. And this, you know what? God's going to use him. God's going to use him to pour out his wrath onto the wicked. The Antichrist won't, won't realize that. But God uses people. And he and, and, and the ones who, who are wicked, the ones who, who, who uh, don't come to Christ, I mean, he, he, God's going to use them to pour out some wrath on these people. Um, God does this for people who do not believe the truth about Jesus Christ and His holy work. I mean, they really have pleasure in their unrighteousness and wickedness. And God, God's going to use them. We go just a little bit here, 2 Thessalonians um, chapter 2, verses 10 through 12, backs that up. It says, And with all the deception of the wickedness, for those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, so as to be saved, for this reason God will send upon them a deluding influence, so that they will believe what is false, and in order that they may, they all may be judged, and who do not believe the truth, but took pleasure in wickedness. So we see that, that God will use him for that. In, in, verse, in, in verse 37, we're going to see that the Antichrist will reject religion. He says, he will show no regard for the gods of his father, or for the desires of women, nor will he show regard for any other god, but he will magnify himself above them all. So really, the, we're, we're going to see three things here in a row uh, about this. That the, He's going to reject the, the, the religion of the world. Okay? Um, and, and more likely, the religion that he's going to reject is anybody who believes that Jesus Christ is Lord. Whether that's Baptist, Christian, you know, whatever, it, it, if that's our belief, or that's what belief, that's what he's going to reject. He's going to reject anything like that. That, that he's not going to, you know, uh, he, he's going to set up his own religion, and he's going to reject that religion because uh, he, he's not going to have any regard for who Christ is. That, that's the sixth thing, sixth thing right here that, that you know, uh, that we have to know as believers that he's going to reject Christ. I'll be talking a little bit more about that. Um, and, and, and he's not going to have any respect. The seventh thing, that no respect for, for no other God besides himself. Um, you know, he's going to attack all, all religions. The part of the, the, one of the things that, that has to happen at the end of times is that he has to sit in the temple that's there in Jerusalem, which that temple was wiped out. So that means that temple has to be rebuilt. Yeah. And he will come and he will sit on that throne there in that temple as God. That's one of the things that has to happen at the end of the times, biblically speaking, that that's going to have to happen. And, and so we, we see that that that, that, that disrespecting, that, 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 that disregarding of who God is. You know, and he's going to demand that first loyalty of the people as he sits.
sits there. And in verse 80, 38, we see that he's going to set up uh, an imperial state of worship. Uh, there in 30, 38, it says, But instead he will honor a God of fortresses, a God his fathers did not know. He will honor him with gold, silver, costly stones, and treasures. So, so we, we see that, that he's going to set this thing, this, this imperial state up of worship, um, where it's a worshipful state. And it's going to be demanded of all citizens of the world to worship him. His God will be a God of fortress, a govern, government of uh, economic prosperity. We're going to see that, that he's going to come in and that, that everything is going to be, he's going to just, he has a, has a, he has control over everything. And all his ideals and all that. And it's going to, it's going to really be, the economic is really going to be great. And if you follow him, he says that, that he's going to hand out parcels of land and, 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 you know, make all those things look so good of what it's going to be. Um, and then lastly, in verse 39, he tells us that he will take action against the strongest of fortresses. And with the help of a foreign god, he will give great honor to those who acknowledge him and will cause them to rule over many. And will parcel out the land for price. I, I, just, I just said that. But... He will gain power, not just by military conquest, but he will gain power through uh, treaties and gain power through, through you know, uh, making up with, with, with other people. He, man, he, but he will oppose anyone. And those who surrender willingly to him will be rewarded with political power and political favors. He is going to. Ruler, and if you either are on his side, he or, or you're not, there won't be any middle ground with him. And, and he will be able to, 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 he'll have a lot of people follow him. You know, and we think that how can that happen? Well, I think it can happen for people who, who, who don't know scripture. I think that it happens for people who, who, who kind of waver back and forth, who truly aren't believers, but just kind of kind of come back and forth. I uh, mean, we, we see it already. Verses 40 through 43 talks about the wars and, and the conquest that, that he's going to have. It says that at the end of time, the king of South will collide with him, and the king of the north will storm against him with chariots and with horses and with many ships. And they will enter the countries, overflow them, and pass through them. He will enter the beautiful land, and many countries will fall. But those who will be rescued out of his hands, Edom, Moab, the foremost, the sons of Ammon, they will stretch out. Then he will stretch out his hand against other countries, and the land of Egypt will not escape. But he will gain control over the hidden treasures of gold and silver, over all the precious things of Egypt and Libyans and the Ethiopians will follow at his heels. So we see that 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 the king of the north and the king of the south, we know that Daniel's that the king of the north is Egypt, the king of the south is Syria. So the, the Arab nations will come together and, and attack him. And he will get his army and they will wipe out Egypt. And Syria and those nations, and, and he says that he will get the gold, and silver from Egypt. That he will, that he will start at this point attacking other nations, and they will start falling, and he will start gaining power um, because they they, they they attack him, and he crushes them. He, it says that he will even invade the beautiful land, which that's a reference to Israel. Yep. So he will even go and destroy Israel. So, so the Antichrist is, is going to meet us in. 
But we see that that uh, the north and the south, like that, that, that the world, basically is what, what he's saying, is it, going to come together and they're going to march against the Antichrist. You know, and, and there's going to be, the, the army that the world is going to get together to march against, it's going to be a lot of people. I, I read maybe even up to two million people. Right? In, in, in this battle, you know where this battle is going to take place, right? Right there in, in, in Israel. We're going to be, it's going to be there at the, at, at, at the end, you know, right there in the, the Mount of Olives and, and that, that, that whole area right there. And it's going to be the Antichrist and Satan is, is going to have his demons and, and they're all going to be there and all these people are going to be there. But the Antichrist loses. Now, he doesn't lose by man-made weapons. There, there's no, no, no man-made weapon that's going to... Jesus Christ is going to just speak. You, you, you get revelation and you start, start reading this. You start thinking about this, this battle of Armageddon that, 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 that's here and, 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 and all, all these armies. And all Christ has got to do is come down to speak. He will, he will end just by the Spirit of, of Christ. Of Him speaking it out. I mean, man, what? You know, and that, that's the end. We know that, that, that Christ, when he returns, it's going to be done. And it's going to be over with. This guy will no longer prevail. As God's people, though, I believe we need to be prepared to know and stand against that and Christ when he shows. We're, we're going to have to. Our duty as followers of Lord Jesus Christ is to stand and cling to his word. Let me tell you, there's going to be a time when we're going to have to make a decision. I mean, it's going to be a time when, you know, you think, oh, I'll definitely make that stand. But will you? I mean, you know, we say we will. We say that we'll, we'll stand up <laughs> in a matter of life and death, you know. That, uh, will you make that stand? You have to recognize who he's going to be. <clears throat> and we're going to have to make a stand. Because there's a lot of times now in the, in the world, I believe, that in our churches that, that we compromise ourselves in the world a lot of times. We don't make even stands the little things in the world. So are we going to be able to make that stand? But I, I think that, that though that we have to be able to identify. I think there's four points I got here that I'll run through uh, is how we can identify the Antichrist. We're going to be able to identify the Antichrist by his relationship to Christ. Okay? And, and I know I talked a little bit about that. I think this is the biggest uh, clue to identifying who the Antichrist is really is. It, 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 it's by his relationship with Christ. You know, John, 1 John 2, 22 says, Who is the liar? It is the man who denies that Jesus is the Christ. Such a man is the Antichrist. He denies the Father and the Son. You know, one thing that we know for sure is that Christ is equal to God. You know, we know the, 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 uh, the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. It's one God, three entities. Okay, we, we know that that's what we preach, that's what we read, that's what we understand is, is that there's one God, there, the three in the people. Okay, that's that's what we that's what we that's what we understand. We we get to John, um, chapter five, verses eighteen and nineteen, and it says, "For this reason, the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him, because he not only was breaking the Sabbath." But he was calling God his own father, making himself equal with God. Therefore Jesus answered and said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, the son cannot do nothing of himself unless it is something he sees the father doing. For whatever the father does, these things that God, or these things the son also does in the same manner. So John makes that connection. And we understand that God and the son are, are equal. So if you deny the son is equal, you're really denying the Father. If, if, you, if you acknowledge the Son, you, you're acknowledging that, 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 that the Son is equal to the Father. So, to deny Christ means to deny His redemptive works. You know? So, so that's the thing that, that the Antichrist is going to do. He is going to deny Christ is equal with the Father. Okay? Because if, if He can get people to understand that, that Christ didn't come down, didn't walk on this earth, didn't die for our sins and rise again, then it would be easier for him to put himself in that position. So he has to, he has to understand that, that, that 
that, that this guy that's going to come in and be the Antichrist, he is going to deny Christ altogether. That is not the way. You know, it is only through me. You know, Christ was just a mere appearance. He will denounce Christ. And he will put himself equal to God. Christ is not God, he will say. I myself am equal to God. So we, we see that he will promote himself. He will blaspheme Christ. I think that we will be identifying him by his relationship towards Christ. That he will stand up and, 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 and make those statements. I think the second thing we're going to see is um, we can identify the Antichrist by his relationship to the church. A relationship to the church. Now I know that there are many Antichrists now. And anybody, anybody who, who does not worship Christ or, or denies Christ was even born or God, uh, you know, uh, they are Antichrist. And so there's a lot of Antichrists out there. You know, 1 John 2 19 says they went out from us, but they didn't, did not really belong to us, for they have belonged to us. They would have remained with us, but they're going to show that none of them belong to us. So, so we, we understand that, you know, somebody who, who is against Christ is not going to stay in the church when the church starts preaching that Christ is equal to God. Okay? They're not going to, they're not going to stay in the church at this point in time when, when we start saying that Christ is the only way. They're going to start fleeing the church when the church starts getting persecuted. You know, we might say it's getting worse. It's not here yet. We're still allowed to come in here freely. We're still allowed to come in here and worship. Nobody's standing outside our, our doors. Nobody, nobody, nobody's doing any of that type of stuff yet. But what happens when it does? You know, the church will be persecuted. It will start being shut down. I mean... You know what? There's a lot of churches out there right now, right now, that are not preaching Scripture, they don't Amen. preach from the Bible. They get up here and and and, 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 and just preach something that's pleasing to the ears. You know, I, we've often wondered why we don't have a lot of people. Sometimes we see these churches that are just full packed with people. You know, whoever comes in this pulpit. Whether it's Greg or Don or Melissa or Leslie or Earl or whoever it is, they will preach scripture. They, we will preach what's in this. We're not going to tickle any ears. We're, we're, going, to, we're going to sit up here and, and, and people don't want that. And let me tell you, it's only going to be the true believers that's going to come to the church knowing it could be the last time they ever step foot in a church. We're going to be persecuted. The burning work is being said. Exactly. You know, it, the Antichrist is going to make it an easier time of, 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 of people coming to him. He's going to make it harder for people to be in the church. You know, you just think about now. Just think about today. Prayer is completely out of schools. The Pledge of Allegiance came before the Supreme Court because of why? It had the words, in God we trust. They, 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 or or one, one nation under God, they want to change our money because it says in God we trust. You know, you think about uh, people can't even say Merry Christmas because it's going to offend somebody. So they got to say Happy Holidays. Right? Don't you think that, that Satan and, and, and is using this as, as, a, a, as a, you know, to get us ready? To kind of kind of smooth that around a little bit? I mean, to prime society? You know? saw clips of this first part of COVID, didn't we? Amen. To see what they can do. Uh, you know? They already tested the water. They have, and they keep testing it. And they keep pushing. I think a lot of people got their eyes open during that time, though. Okay? I understand that. You know, but, but man, don't think that. I think we will definitely know who the Antichrist is by his relationship to the church and, and how he's going to come against the church. He will seek out those who do not worship him, and he will persecute those who worship Christ. So the third thing is um, we can identify the Antichrist by his relationship to the truth. His relationship to the truth. 
you know, do you think that Antichrist crust is going to go looking for? Right? He, he's going he's to he's take that truth and he's going to turn it just a little bit. He's not going to speak a whole truth. He's going to turn it just, a, just enough, you know, but, but the uh, experiment, if you put a top of a frog in the boiling water, he'll jump right out. If you put the frog in water and keep turning the heat up, the heat up, heat up, sooner or later, he, he won't ever jump out. Okay, because and, and, that half truth <coughs> is easier to believe than a whole truth, all, a whole a, a false truth altogether. You know, First Peter five eight tells us, "Be sober, be of sober spirit, be on the alert. Your advisory, the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. He will, he he will he will get the edges of, of the people with those half truths. You know, he he will he will wean the the ones who who are." Truly, Bible believers, you know, he, he'll 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 get the outskirts to because uh, he can't always he's not going to get everybody, but he's going to get a lot, you know. And there might be a lot of people going to church. But there's going to be a lot of people that that's not going to go to church. Man, he he will offer up new truth about scriptures. He you know and he, he'll make it believable. First Timothy six three through six says. If anyone teaches a different doctrine and does not agree with the sound words of our Lord Jesus Christ and the teaching that accords with godliness, he is puffed up and conceited and understands nothing. He has an unhealthy craving for controversy and for quarrels about words which produce envy, dissension, slander, evil suspicions, and the constant friction among people who are depraved and mind and deprived of the truth, imagining that, that, that godliness is a means of gain. He will divide churches. He will divide households with the truth. Amen. A house divided cannot stand. And he will divide. You know, and that, that's the scary part. I can understand coming to church, but he will make divide households. One house, one side believes this, and another believes that. And, and, and the, the disintegration of the family is the worst thing that can ever happen. And you can see it happening in our country all the time. Amen. And we cannot overestimate the importance of the ideal truth. You know, Jesus says, you know, he, 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 when Jesus talks in here, he says, truly, truly. You know, he, he says that you need to listen up. This is the truth. This is the, the, the one thing that we can always turn to. In the Bible, coming with God and coming with truth are, are hand in hand. And we, and, and we have to understand that the Antichrist is going to tell us just enough truth to get us to try to turn. And I believe that we, we know that. And that way we, we have to be in Scripture. And we have to, have to allow the Holy Spirit to help us through this because the Holy Spirit, that's what He does. He, he helps us understand the truth of Scriptures. <coughs> Last thing I want us to, want us to see that we can identify the Antichrist by his relationship to salvation. His relationship to salvation. 1 John 2, 24 and 25 says, As for you, let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. If what you have heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. This is a promise which he himself made us Made to us eternal life. So, so we see the Antichrist is going to is is going to bring on something called secular salvation. You know, he, he's going to have a, a secular salvation. I have the answers. I have the answers for for famine. I have the answers for for disease. And I have the answers for for all these things. And if you just come to me, your life is going to be so much better. And he's going to he's going to have that secular salvation. You know, come to me. Well, what is it going to be? The mark of the beast. If you don't have the mark of the beast, then you, you can't buy food. You can't buy. You can't do get medicines. You can't do anything. You know, because he wants that secular salvation. I am the one that's going to save you. Jesus Christ is not the way, the truth of the life. He, he's going to say that. We know that Jesus Christ is the only way. We, we know that. We make that confession. We, we repent of our sins and, and we understand that, that we trust Him. You know, Jesus came in, the, the, when, he, when He came into Jerusalem there, they wanted Him to be the 
king to the side. The one that was going to overthrow the Roman government. But Jesus came in riding on a donkey, didn't he? The Antichrist is going to set himself up as king. The total opposite of who Christ is. And when it comes to salvation, he's going to say that I am the one. We all know that that's not the truth. I don't think we can identify the Antichrist by that. By that central salvation that he has. It's to the only, the only salvation, the true way is through Jesus Christ. And so we, we see that. So to wrap up, you know, the Antichrist is just that. He, he is a guy who's going to counterfeit the work of God. And he's been, and, and Satan, uh, and it's been the work of Satan since, since he was created. You know, and, and so the Antichrist will, will be doing that. You know, um, as we see the end of times get closer, there will be Antichrist. We have to know our scripture. We, we, have, to, we have to know what's going on. We, 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 we we're going to have to live godly lives. We're going to have to, be, we're going to, have to, to, to step up and put our religion on, on the line. Um, but there's going to be a lot of contrast between the Antichrist and Jesus Christ. And I'm just going to kind of run through a list here real quick. Christ came from above. The Antichrist will sin from the pit. Christ came in his Father's name. The Antichrist will come in his own name. Christ humbled himself. The Antichrist will exalt himself. Christ was... Despised, the Antichrist will be admired. Christ will be exalted. The Antichrist will be cast down to hell. Christ came to do his Father's will. The Antichrist came to do his own will. Christ came to save. The Antichrist will come to destroy. Christ is the good shepherd. The Antichrist is the evil shepherd. Christ is the true vine. The Antichrist is the vine of the earth. Christ is the truth. The Antichrist is the lie. Christ is the holy one. The Antichrist is the lawless one. Christ is the man of sorrows. The Antichrist is the man of sin. Christ is the son of God. The Antichrist is the son of perdition. Christ is the mystery of godliness. The Antichrist will be the mystery of God manifested in the flesh. <coughs> the Antichrist will be the beginning of the end. We may need to make sure we can spot him. We need to make sure that that, 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 that we know God's word. We need to make sure that, that we can live our lives accordingly. Because I'm telling you, when he comes, there's going to be a period of time when we're going to be persecuted. There's going to come a time when we're going to need to make a stand. And I pray that, 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 that we'll know that time and we'll know who he is and we'll be able to make that stand.